think those assault style weapons that are grandfathered should not be grandfathered. They should not be allowed in the state of Connecticut. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So grandfather clauses have got to be the biggest piece of trickery in all of politics. They add grandfather clauses to magazine bans, assault weapons bans, and other bans to try and soften the blow and make people a little bit more easy with the whole process and maybe get some other lawmakers on board that may not otherwise. But in the end, grandfather clauses are reversible. Now, before we get started, I want to thank the main sponsor of this video, which is Gunspot. Absolutely the coolest new website you guys are going to find out there. They sell everything Second Amendment related. Some of this stuff is going to come in at prices you just won't find anywhere else. They also have as part of their site auctions, so you can find things for even less than you would find them new. You can also buy new at the auction, so there's a lot of different stuff to see there. They have stuff like the War Room and Battle Station. They have uh, the Academy. You can learn things. They have videos and blogs, and really, it's an all-encompassing experience, so definitely check out gun spot. Today we're going to be talking about Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont and what he recently said. If he is re-elected, he will be removing the grandfather clause on the current assault weapons ban in Connecticut. That means you'd have to give up your legally owned stuff. Now Connecticut already has a pre-existing so-called assault weapons ban and with that ban came a grandfather clause. Now that grandfather clause got some politicians on board and it kind of calm some of the fears of people who already own the stuff at the time. Now this is kind of an older law, but there's still a lot in the state of Connecticut. Now with that being said, the current governor of the state of Connecticut, who is up for re-election, said this. I think those assault style weapons that are grandfathered should not be grandfathered. They should not be allowed in the state of Connecticut. Now, unfortunately, according to the latest polls, Ned Lamont's Republican challenger is trailing by about 11 points. That's a pretty big deficit. That's a margin that's really difficult to make up, but it is doable if people actually show up in numbers. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind here is that so far, it's just words. These words would have to be written into paper. That paper would have to turn into legislation. That legislation would have to go through its process before it ever even got to the governor's desk to be signed. And there's a lot to do in between that time. So there's nothing that would happen immediately, but if he looks into doing that, other states have done something similar. So they can simply use the other states that have removed grandfather clauses as a blueprint, like California removing the grandfather clause for its magazine ban. Um, they can use that as a blueprint moving forward and try and get things passed. I mean, we'll see if that happens, but again, you know, elections have consequences. And he's telling you up front, this is one thing that he plans on doing if he wins. So people should take that seriously. Now, obviously, this is a really big deal, right? We're talking about the state coming in and taking people's privately owned property away, their Second Amendment implications, and I don't think something like this would hold up in court post-ruin. But you have to remember, the court system is backlogged. It, things take a long time. Some of these cases take nearly a decade, and so you'd never want it to pass the legislative process. Right now, it's just words. It hasn't even gotten on paper yet, but if it does get to paper, you need to make sure that if he is reelected, that it stops there and never makes it up to his desk. If you let it get it past that point and actually get signed, then again, it could take years before the people of Connecticut actually get relief, in which case the law could actually stand for a significant amount of time without some type of injunction. So like I was saying before, don't just kind of, oh, whatever, and fast forward past this stuff. Pay attention to what's going on in your state. Pay attention to what these lawmakers are wanting to do because, I mean, they're telling you right up front, this is our plan. So I wanted to uh, let you people know, anybody out there that's interested and those people in Connecticut, that this could potentially be the future. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.